One of the biggest investigations that I've been involved in recently sort of was an unfolding, an organic investigation and one that I think has still got some way to go. Uh, it started off on a programme I do called Five Live Investigates and we heard about schools uh, that were being uh, offered laptops and other valuable computer equipment but being told that they would get it for nothing and the schools not unreasonably said well why am I getting this equipment for nothing? Uh, and it turned out that the salespeople said, well, the reason you're getting it for nothing is because certain manufacturers want a, a test bed. Uh, they want flagship schools. So if they can get it into your school, they'll then be able to sell it on to other schools. So uh, this seemed a plausible reason for the schools. They were then asked to sign leasing agreements by the contractor. And they said, well, if it's free, why are we having to sign any, anything like a leasing agreement? And they were told, oh, don't worry about it, you won't have to pay anything. This is all about satisfying European competition law. So the schools duly signed up. Now, as it happened, uh, the, uh, the schools had been promised a certain level of income from the companies uh, to match the, the outgoings that they were going to have to make on the laptops and the other computer equipment. The companies who had guaranteed the money then went into administration, went into liquidation, so there was no money coming in, but the schools were then committed to spending out the money on the leases for the equipment. Not only that, they found that the amounts that they'd signed up for were vastly inflated. So for example, modems, which many suppliers provide free, were being provided for on this lease at £350 a time. These schools would have laptops, which were only worth maybe six or £700, for which again on the lease, they were being charged three and a half thousand pounds. So the net result was that these schools were left liable for thousands of pounds, uh, more in some cases than their, in, than their entire annual budget as schools, and they had no means of paying it. Now that particular investigation uh, came to us through a trade magazine, a magazine in fact called Inside Leasing. So it had been publicised, but it had never been featured in any mainstream news outlet and hadn't been picked up in any way. And uh, we decided to make inquiries, spoke to the journalist who had written the story. He was very helpful. Journalists often are, and uh, other journalists working in similar fields but who are not direct competitors of yours can often be very helpful. They've got nothing to lose, and people generally are kind and generous when they've got good stories to tell and when they've had the chance to already tell it first. So we had a, a good insider in the world of inside leasing. We then found out that there were similar leasing scams going on involving, for example, golf courses and the sale of golf equipment through leases. Again, the golf courses would be told they'd get a certain piece of equipment, but they wouldn't have to pay for it. Uh, there was a, a screen that you could fit to a golf buggy, and they were told that the screen would be paid for by adverts that would be placed on the screen. However, the company providing the adverts went down. That left the companies liable for the rental of the of the screens but with no external means of financing the loan of them. Uh, many of the big banks were involved uh, so that's one of the, the biggest investigations that I've been involved in over the last few months and it migrated from a, a 30 minute slot on Radio 5 Live on 5 Live Investigates to a, a dedicated documentary on Radio 4 on a programme called The Report uh, which I presented and which I believe could even go on to make uh, national television and may even turn into a, a panorama investigation.